large Bedouin style tent pitched at the side of a long road. It had many layers of coverings on the outside and was crowned with thick deep red cloth that cascaded down on all sides. Its door flaps were wide open in invitation and a rich red carpet rolled through its opening beckoning weary sojourners to enter its shaded domain. There were many people coming and going on the road, some heavily laden, some weary, tired from the journey. Others pushed carts with their heads down, sweat beating their faces and arms, and shoulders straining at the weight. They didn't stop to enter the tent, nor did they even perceive it beckoning to them. They strove on without rest. Others walked the path with small, shuffling steps. Their feet were shackled and their hands bound. Their focus was on their afflictions and limitations, and their eyes were cast down. Some people, on the other hand, were so focused and driven that they were running along the road. They were so full of energy and confidence that they had no need to stop and rest, they thought. They had it all under control. I watched as someone weary and dusty from their journey entered the tent and I entered with them. Immediately I was struck by the delicious cool of this sanctum, a shelter from the burning heat of the day, and I was struck by the quiet. The buzz and noise of the outside could not be heard here. There was such a sense of relief in this place that tears began to fill my eyes and roll down my cheeks. I heard the Lord say, This is my tent of meeting. Come to me, all you labouring and burdened ones, and I will give you rest. Matthew eleven twenty eight. For I satisfy the weary ones and refresh everyone who languishes. Jeremiah thirty one twenty five. We laid down the baskets and backpacks we were carrying, immediately feeling lighter. Someone came and removed our dusty, journey-worn outer garments and placed lounging robes on us. At the same time, before we advanced into the inner sanctum, our shoes were removed and feet bathed with perfumed water. The smiling attendants brought bowls for us also to wash our face and hands. Even though I had entered the tent of meeting with another and I had seen others entering also, it was from this point on as if I were the only one there. Before me at the heart of the tent was an inner chamber. It was curtained with beautiful coloured veils. There was a deep longing to go further in and I felt the same longing like a wave of yearning pulling me like the gravitational pull of an outward running sea when your feet are standing in the shallows at the shoreline. As I stepped forward in obedient delight, Jesus himself, like an impatient lover, stepped through the veils toward me, his hands reaching out to me. The look of love in his eyes overwhelmed me and the peace that invaded my soul drenched me like a refreshing shower. He embraced me, whispering, I have been waiting for you to come. As he held me in his arms, I felt the cares and burdens, griefs and sorrows I had been carrying in my heart drain away with the tears that flowed from my eyes and mingled with Jesus' own tears. I wept, it seemed, for ages in his arms, my face pressed into his chest. I know, my beloved, he whispered, I know. And with those few words, I knew that he not only knew my heartaches and present afflictions, but that he knew me, every part of me, inside out, and that he knows me from eternity past to eternity future. He knows my comings and goings and guards them now and forever. Psalm 121.8 he knows my days and my nights and the number of my days are written in his book, Psalm 139, 16. It gave me such assurance that the counsels of his secret will shall be fulfilled and he shall do all of his pleasure. 
I declared the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done, saying, My purpose shall be established, and I will accomplish all my good pleasure. Isaiah 46.10 He was saying he would accomplish all his good pleasure for me and in me, and that there is no need to fear or be anxious for anything or anyone. He knows, and he has already established his purpose. Jesus spoke, Come, enter into my rest. He led me to a low table around which were scattered many colourful cushions, some richly embroidered, others plump and comfy. We reclined at the table and I leant back upon his breast. The table was set with delicacies, both sweet and sustaining. We ate and drank together, Jesus choosing the food for me and hand feeding me. As I leant on his breast, he whispered words of love, and affirmation to me, and we shared our hearts innermost secrets and thoughts. I could feel and hear the beating of his heart, and I became aware of my own heart skipping beats and falling into rhythm with his. There was such a sense of being connected, being one with him, one with the lover of my soul, one with my Redeemer, one with my Father and Creator of all things. I felt connected to eternity itself. There is no time in this place, no restrictions, no limitations. It is a place of true liberty and freedom, a place of rest and nourishment, a safe and sheltered place where the troubles and afflictions and storms of life cannot evade or penetrate. It is a deep place of knowing that all is well of quiet assurance and confidence, a place to receive revelation, wisdom and understanding. But most of all, it is a place where love is perfected. I could have stayed leaning against his breast in his loving arms forever. I closed my eyes to relish it and soak in it. When I opened my eyes again, I was back on the road journeying, but I was no longer weary or burdened. I felt joy bubble up within me and I had a spring in my step. I felt strengthened and refreshed. I was loved so deeply and I felt his love. In fact, I suddenly realized I could still feel his arms around me. And as I inclined my ear, I heard his heart beating still. I closed my eyes and I was back in the inner chamber of our place of meeting in a twinkling of an eye. Beloved, the Lord is calling us to lay down the heavy burdens of ministry, family, work and everything else that takes our focus or distracts us. He is calling us to come and rest in him. Ho, everyone who thirsts, go to the waters. He who has no money, go, buy food, eat, yes, go. Buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me and eat that which is good. Then your very being will delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen, obey and your inner being will live. I will cut an everlasting covenant with you the sure loving kindness of David, Isaiah 55, 1-3. The Lord is longing to refresh us, and he is longing for us to spend time in the secret place, in that place of intimacy where we meet with him as the lover of our souls, where we incline upon his breast and realign our hearts to his, where we are alone with him and we can pour our hearts out to him and he to us. There is an intimate sharing, a communion that enmeshes our spirits, an abiding that cannot be violated or abused by the enemy or tainted by the world. For in the day of trouble he will conceal me in his tabernacle. In the secret place of his tent he will hide me. He will lift me up on a rock. Psalm 27, 5 He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High 
shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Psalm 91, 1. Too often we push through and persevere, toiling in our journey and only visiting the wondrous place of rest and intimacy. But we're not meant to visit, coming and going at will and at need. We are to dwell in this place, take up residence, carry the secret place in our innermost being always so that we only need to close our eyes and focus on Jesus and we are there. Our hearts need to abide in that place of peace and oneness with the Lord so that we are continually refreshed, nourished and sustained. Here we are perfected by his love and all fear and doubts are cast out. 1 John 4.18 Here we are given eyes that see beyond the natural and a heavenly perspective that causes us to soar above the earth realm of storms and difficulties. It is the place of perpetually knowing that all is well with our souls. His tent of meeting is not a long way in the journey, a distant place we have to travel far to get to. It is as close as a heartbeat or a breath, but we so often fail to comprehend it and instead wrestle with our burdens. Often we come to him in prayer and intercession, petitioning for our needs and the needs of others. We thank him, we praise and worship him, but at the same time we do not truly enter the secret place, but stay in the outer chamber of his tent. He's calling us, longing for each one of us to abide in the inner sanctum of his perfect love. I hear him now. I am waiting for you, my beloved. Arise, my love, my beautiful one, and come away with me. Song of Songs 2.10 Close your eyes and see Jesus' arms reaching out for you. Feel his longing pull at your heart like the waves of the sea and run into his open arms. Press your face into his breast and feel his heart beating with desire for you and abide in that place, for all is well. Heavenly Father, thank you that you desire such intimate fellowship with me. Lord, I choose to lay down every burden and all that weighs heavy on my heart right now at your feet. Refresh me in your presence and draw me into the inner sanctum of your pavilion, into the secret place where I can rest upon your breast in sweet communion. Lord, perfect me in your love and teach me how to abide in this place of rest and safety in your embrace. Please forgive me for the times I've said I'm too busy and resisted your call to come aside. For the times I've heard you knocking but turned over in my bed, and for the times I was so focused on my needs and circumstances that I never even stopped to ask what was on your heart. Precious Lord, help me to hear the whisper of your heart and draw me into that place of intimacy with you where I know that all is well with my soul. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>